And welcome back. Happy Wednesday hump day to everyone out there. And I got an email from one of our traders asking another really good question. Can you neutralize gamma, vega, and theta? And his question was, can you do all of them at the same time? And it's a really good question. And the answer is, like in most cases, it depends. So what does it depend on? Let's go find out. And as always, before we do, please be sure to click like and subscribe. It is greatly appreciated and helps so much to promote the channel. So whenever we're talking about hedging, we typically are talking about our Greeks. Now, it turns out that hedging delta is very easy. All right, that's easy because you can hedge it with shares of stock. Stock only has delta. In other words, there's no gamma, no theta, or no vega. So if you have, let's say, long 200 deltas in a position, well, that's easy to hedge. You would just simply short 200 shares, and that would put you at delta neutral. Now, of course, keep in mind you're only neutral for a very short range of stock prices. That does not mean you've completely negated all stock price risk, just over a short range. But the point to see is that it's very easy to do. I didn't affect my gamma, theta, or vega because stock doesn't have those Greeks. So delta hedging is really not the big issue for traders. However, that's not true when we're dealing with gamma, vega, and theta. Now, as a quick review, remember that gamma shows how quickly delta will change. Vega shows how sensitive your option is to changes in volatility. So if volatility goes from 20 to 21%, or 20% to 19%, that's a one percentage point change or a one tick change in volatility. How much is your options price going to move? Well, that's what Vega shows you. Theta, of course, I think most of you know, shows by how much your options price will fall for one day's passage of time. So if your option is worth $3 today, and all things being equal, it's worth $2.95 tomorrow, then it has a $0.05 cent theta. So again, the problem that this trader was asking about is, can you neutralize these effects? Well, in order to do that, you must use options. Why? Because stock doesn't have gamma, vega, or theta, or rho for that matter. But for this video, we're just talking about gamma, vega, and theta. So we can no longer use shares of stock to neutralize these. And so the problem is if we short an option to neutralize gamma, are we going to tweak vega and theta in an adverse way, in a beneficial way, or will they just remain unchanged? So that was really the big question. So again, you have to use options, but what we want to look at in this video is can it be done? Can we neutralize gamma, vega, and theta? Well, let's look at an example with neutralizing gamma. The first question we have to come up with is how many calls should you sell? That's assuming we are going to sell calls as a way to neutralize gamma. We could certainly do it with puts. Long puts will have positive gamma as well. But for the example, we have to pick something, some type of an option to hedge with. So let's say that you own $500 calls. So let's say that you look at your broker's platform and find the gamma is 0.03273. You multiply that by the five calls that you're long, and then what's called your total gamma is going to be 0.1637. So let's say that you want to neutralize gamma by selling the 105 calls. Now you could do it by selling the 110 calls, by selling puts. There's a number of ways we could approach this, but we know it has to be an option. So for this example, we're going to sell the 105 calls. So we look on our broker's platform, it shows the 105 call gamma is 0 0.03095. So not terribly different from 0 0.03273, but it is different. So how many calls would we need to sell? Well, we take the total position gamma, 0.1637, we divide it by the gamma of the option that we wish to use to hedge, the 105 call. So remember, it had 0 0.03095. We're just going to divide the total gamma position by the 105 call gamma, and we come up with 5.3 calls. So not too far off from the number of calls that were long. Unfortunately, we can't sell 5.3 calls. Now, if we had 10 times this many, yeah, we'd land on 53 calls. It would work out as a nice, neat number. 
But the point to understand is that in most cases, whenever you're hedging with options because you're dealing with long decimals, they're not going to be easily divisible, they have to trade in 100 share lots, that it's usually not going to be a perfect hedge. So in this case, because we can only sell off five calls, we're going to be a little under hedged, but we'll be pretty close. So let's jump over to an Excel spreadsheet and take a look to see if this actually works. All right, so now we're into an Excel spreadsheet, and this is one that you can buy online. It's a one-time fee. The website is macrooption.com. Number of really cool Excel spreadsheets that you can use for simulations. So right now I've got it set to one call, 60 days to expiration, $100 strike. And you can see over here the delta is 52 gamma. That's what we saw in the presentation, 0.0327. We've got a theta of 0.0404, vega of 0.1614. For the 105 call, there is the delta, minus 0.37. There's the minus 0.03095 for gamma, 0.0382 for theta, and minus 0.1526 for vega. So we assume that we were long five calls, and there is the 0.1637 gamma. So again, this is what we're seeing on our broker's platform. We did this math, we figured out we have to sell 5.3 calls. Well, I can't sell 5.3, but I could sell 5. So I'm going to make this minus 5. And so now take a look. Look at my total gamma is 0 0.0089, basically neutralized. I still have a tiny bit of gamma because technically I should have sold 5.3 calls. But we can also see it here, we're long 0 0.1637 gamma, we're short 0.1547 roughly, and so they're about canceling out. But take a look at theta. We had minus 0.2018 for theta and 0.1908 with a sale of the 105 calls, again taking us roughly to zero. And take a look at vega. We had 0.8072, we had minus 0.7632 from the hedge, gives us 0.04. Again, not perfectly zero, but pretty close. Now, if I could have sold 5.3 contracts, that absolutely would have neutralized us. But for practical purposes, the point to see is that if you neutralize gamma, you will automatically neutralize theta and automatically neutralize vega on one condition. And that is that interest rates are zero. Now, of course, in the real world, that's not going to be true, at least most of the time, but it's still a good starting point to at least understand that gamma and vega are joined at the hip. We've talked about that before. If you have a position with positive gamma, you have positive vega, which we can see here. Positive, positive, and therefore you will have negative theta. If you have a short option, you will have negative gamma and negative vega, but you will have positive theta. But there's this interesting mathematical connection that if you have no interest rates, that they will all be neutralized together. All right, so let's go try that. Let's see about neutralizing Vega. You own $500 calls. You look on your broker's platform. You see the Vega is 0.1614. Multiply it by five. You have a total position Vega of 0.807. And you want to neutralize Vega by selling the 105 calls. Well, we look on our broker's platform, the 105 call Vega is 0.1526. We take our total position, Vega, 0.807, divided by 0.1526, and look at that. We come up with exactly 5.3 calls. Okay, so let's try it with neutralizing theta. Again, you own 100 calls. You look on your broker's platform, the theta shows minus 0.04036. We multiply by five calls, your total theta is minus 0.2018. And now you want to neutralize theta by selling the 105 calls. So we look on our broker's platform, the 105 call theta is minus 0.03816. So how many calls do we need to sell? Well, we take the total theta of our position, which is just five times the individual call theta, 0.2018, and we divide it by the one that we want to hedge. So for the 105 call is 0.03816. And when we do that, look at that. 
we come up with exactly 5.3 calls. So the main points to remember is that when it comes to gamma and vega, that they are joined together. This is assuming you're not talking about different expirations, such as with a diagonal spread. So if you have positive gamma, you will have positive vega. If you have negative gamma, you will have negative vega. They're joined together. But gamma and vega are opposite of theta. However, and this is partly this person's question, was saying, well, how do you neutralize one without tweaking the others? And the answer is, you don't have to, at least if interest rates are zero. So if you have 0% interest, neutralizing one factor neutralizes the remaining two. So if we're talking about gamma, vega, and theta, if you neutralize gamma, you will automatically neutralize vega and theta. And if you neutralize vega, you will automatically neutralize gamma and theta. And finally, if you neutralize theta, you will automatically neutralize gamma and vega. That is, again, assuming that you are operating in 0% interest rate environments. Now, we're not going to have time to cover it in this video. We'll cover it in a future one. But just for a little look ahead, it turns out that if you have positive interest rates, if you neutralize gamma, you will neutralize vega for the reasons we just saw, but you will not neutralize theta. And that's because there is a cost of carry component. But we'll have to save that for a future video. But as kind of a summary, if you're operating in positive interest rate environments, which will be the norm, if you neutralize gamma, you will, for the most part, neutralize vega and theta. Now, of course, theta is not going to be perfectly neutralized, but as long as we don't have really high interest rates, or if you're not dealing with a long-dated option or a very high strike. In other words, there's not a very big cost of carry. For the most part, if you neutralize gamma, vega, or theta, you will automatically neutralize the remaining two. And so it's critically important to understand relationships like this if you're trying to navigate the many risks that can occur with options. And for anyone who'd like to learn more about the art and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course, Strategy Lab, and a Candlesticks and Technical Analysis course. It's all at optionsa-z.com. Also, please join us on Options A to Z's Facebook trading group, and you can find a link in the description below.